a bad day with endometriosis would be waking up in the middle of the night, maybe 2 or 3 a.m., feeling really, really nauseous, like I wanted to vomit. Bianca is just one of a million Aussie women who suffers from endometriosis, the chronic disease in which endometrial tissue grows outside the uterus, causing a range of brutal symptoms. Ten days before my period would happen, I would have severe pain. It affected me a lot and um, also that affected my mental health. While there's no cure, there could finally be some relief on the horizon. For the first time in 13 years, a drug specifically designed to target endometriosis pain has been approved by the TGA. This medication replaces a group of medications that we've had before. 75% of women will have a significant reduction in their pain. The drug, Riequa, will treat the moderate to severe pain associated with endometriosis, but it's not without risks. There is a reduction in bone mineral density. Now, ultimately, that will then often result in osteoporosis. Now, we don't actually think that in the long term that is significant, but it's obviously a risk for young women. The other drawback is the cost. A one-month supply will set you back $135, a price that is not subsidised by Medicare yet. A decision on whether to add it to the PBS is expected this month. And the drug isn't the only costly element for those suffering. Particularly for regional remote women, uh, just getting to a doctor is sometimes a big, a big task. Today, the National Party called on the government to extend Medicare-funded appointments for women dealing with the disease. Let's make those consults 45 minutes and let's give uh, the support to, to the gynaecologist to be able to be there and to be able to do that. I think that our government definitely needs to step up, but more importantly, I think if you go to the doctors, uh, you need to be validated and the fact that you are having pain needs to be validated by a doctor. Well, Casey Burgess is an actress and singer who's just been named Ambassador for Endometriosis Australia. Uh, Casey, what was your reaction to this drug's approval? I was confused because I had asked my doctor not long before when I'd sort of heard about it. I went in there and I was, I was there for something else and I asked him about it and he said, oh, I know nothing about it. So then I kind of didn't think it was happening and then I heard this, so I was pretty, pretty happy when I found out. How important is it that this drug is made both available and also affordable? Oh, it's so important. I mean, from, you know, the age of 15, I was in curled over in pain at school, having to leave school and the amount of hours that so many girls, women around the world are struggling with and it's this silent killer that we just need. To have that to be affordable is so, so, so important. I cannot stress that enough. And um, I'm just putting it out there to the world to please um, let's make this available for everybody and make it easy. You've been struggling with this condition for a really long time. What's it like to live with? Ah, uh, look, I had someone um, come up to me the other day in the cafe and pat my belly and say congratulations. Oh. Um, that was, you know, how, what do you say to that, you know? Thanks. Uh, it's just one of those things that in public, uh, I now just let it out. I just let it hang. And that's sort of why I started doing... Um, when I was having my bloated days, I would start just posting about it online and um, then I'd have days off work and I'd, you know, be in ER, they'd give me morphine, which I've now found out I'm allergic to. Um, so it's just every time I feel like I go through um, a period, it feels like I'm in labour. I haven't been through labour yet, but I've been told that the way I'm acting, everyone's like, you'll be pretty set for that if that day ever happens. <laughs> why, why do you think endometriosis is so misunderstood? Well, look, it's a silent killer in a way um, and it's just one of those things that I think from the outside it doesn't look like anything's wrong unless you're crippled over in pain or, you know, we've had a, a week's worth of naprogesic. Um, I'm guessing that's why. Do you think that the fact that it does affect women is part of the problem? I think it's a huge part of the problem. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that men don't understand it, but, you know, even my own partners that I've had in my life kind of go, oh, I don't really know what to do here. I watched a documentary that even some of the surgeons that had been working on women with endometriosis at the end of it said, I, I didn't, we don't really know what we're doing. There's not enough research. So, you know, I've been a little bit apprehensive to uh, go in and get myself cut open if we're not really sure. You know, I know that there's so, so many amazing surgeons out there now, but that's kind of the phase that I'm at now that I'm ready to dive down that path. But it's been scary because, you know, you don't hear about, about it very often, so it's not really uh, something you want to dive into unless everybody around you is sure. So, I don't know, it's, it's very 
unspoken and needs to be uh, spoken about a lot more. Yeah, no, no cure for an illness that affects, what, a million Australian women? But, hey, you can get chewable Viagra. That's fine, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's fine. We... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and true, sadly. <laughs> sadly, very true. <laughs> Casey Burgess, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.